So people had some questions in the homework. So why don't we go over them? Well, I can't do all of them. <laughs> stuff to do. But we can do some of them. So let's find the integral from 0 to log 4 of cinch x. Okay. This is your reward for coming to class, which Melissa doesn't deserve, but she's going to get anyway. Oh, didn't see you there. All right. So first, ignore the limits and just do the integration. So this is e to the x plus e to the minus x, and then it's divided by 2. So this is really a half times e to the x plus e to the minus x. So one of the things you can do to make integration easier is pull any constants out of the integral. So now the half is outside of the integral, so it's easier to work with. Because it tends to confuse people with that thing over 2. Or you could have made it e to the x over 2 plus e to the minus x over 2. There's three or four different ways you could write that. I suspect everybody here will write it the same way now. All right. So what is the antiderivative of e to the x? It's e to the x. And the antiderivative of e to the minus x is e to the minus x divided by negative 1. Because you divide by the derivative of negative x. So that comes out e to the minus x. <clears throat> I'm sorry, minus e to the minus x. Again, remember when you do the antiderivative, when you do the integral of e to a function, right? So if you're doing the integral of e to something times x, it's e to the, the kx over k. So here, you're dividing by negative 1. So there's a the negative right there. Okay? And then you're going from 0 to natural log of 4. What is e to the log of 4? Yep. So this becomes 1 half e to the log of 4 minus e to the negative log of 4 minus 1 half e to the 0 minus e to the 0. Even if you don't know what e to the 0 is, it's 1. Those are going to cancel. So this whole right-hand term is going to go away. And e to the log 4 is 4. This is 1 half of 4 minus 1 over 4. Remember what a negative power means. You could stop there, or you could make that 15 eighths. doesn't really matter. OK? Question? That's not so bad. I mean, in the final, you should expect to have to do a couple of integrals. I would say that's sort of the upper limit in difficulty, but, you know, something like that. You'll have practice finals problems. Let's practice another one. Suppose we had a reset. I'm not going to use that array, sorry. And you go from 1 to 4 of x plus 1 over the square of x squared dx. I suspect more than one of you had trouble with this. So, you want to do yes? Oh, yes. <clears throat> well, e to the 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Right, so this right term, that goes right. Okay. So, before you do the integration, you have to put the integral in the position that you can integrate it. So, x plus 1 over the square root of x squared is x plus 1 over the square root of x 
times x plus 1 over the square root of x, which is x squared plus x over the square root of x plus x over the square root of x, which is 2x over the square root of x. And 1 over the square root of x times 1 over the square root of x is 1 over x. square root of x. Well, that's x to the 1. That's x to the 1 half. What do you do with the powers? Come on, what do you do with the powers when you divide it? You have two choices, add or subtract. Subtract. Well, you guys are really reluctant to guess. It's OK to be wrong. So you get x squared plus 2x to the 1 half plus 1 over x. Okay? Again, this is x to the 1. This is x to the 1 half. You subtract, so you get 1 half. Okay, so now we're integrating <coughs> x squared plus 2x to the 1 half plus 1 over x dx. Okay. Integral of x squared is x cubed over 3. Integral of x to the 1 half is x to the 3 halves over 3 halves. And the integral of 1 over x is the log of the absolute value of x. And this is going to go from 1 to 4. And now you just have to plug in. So we get, uh, let's see, 64 over 3. What is 4 to the 3 halves? Well, it's the square root of 4, which is 2 cubed, which is 8. So you get uh, 16 over 3 halves, which is 32 thirds, plus log of 4, minus, uh, I'm going to squeeze that in. One third plus two times one over two thirds is four thirds plus zero. So you see, you get uh, ninety one thirds plus log four. How's that? You like that one? So we see what they did again? So you just foil it out. You take the, the integrals of the pieces. This is slightly annoying, but not too bad. Remember, dividing by 3 halves is like multiplying by 2 thirds. Right? So 2x to the 3 halves over 3 halves is 4 thirds. And x to the 3 halves is the square root of x cubed. Okay, there was another thing we had questions on. We had okay. the growth model for an app is given by that. Find the total number of apps downloaded, which I guess is this is on the other. Homework. I guess this is homework seven. So we give you that uh, dy dt one minus e minus three t y zero equals eleven. So if you're given a derivative and you want to work backwards and find a total, you're going to integrate. So you're going to integrate one minus e to the minus three t. Dt, and then this information will help us figure out the constant. Okay? Okay. So the integral of 1 is t. The integral of e to the minus 3t is e to the minus 3t over negative 3, plus a constant, which is t plus 
e to the minus 3t over 3. Remember what e to the minus 3t means. 1 over e to the positive 3t. So you could also make this, so this is y equals uh, t plus 1 over 3 e to the 3t plus a constant. So you don't need that last step, but it's useful. We know that y at 0 is 11. Why 11? I don't know. Why not? That tells us that when t is 0, y is 11. So 11 equals 0 plus a third plus c. So c is 32 thirds. expression for the total number. Oh, and then 10 days, right? I'm sorry. Now I just have to plug in 10. So it's 10 plus 1 over 3e to the 30th, which is basically 0 plus 32 thirds. Okay? What? You plug in 10. Yeah. Plug into your calculator. You plug in 10? Yeah. Oh. You plug in 10. This will be 10. This will be 1 over 3e to the 30th, which is going to basically be 0 plus 32 thirds. So you'll get uh, 122 thirds in a, in a smidge. So far so good? Good. Is this helping? Yes? Is it possible I could do the other problem? I mean, I don't need to do all of the homework for everybody, but sure. The other word problem? Can we have it right here in the front row? I'm not going to do the entire homework, but okay. Last one. You all saw there's another My Math Lab, right? Okay, good. Glad you're paying attention. The marginal cost of producing a widget is c prime of x is minus 0.04x cubed minus 24x squared plus 6x minus 5,000. Okay? Where x is the number of widgets and c is the cost, find the total cost of producing 10,000 C at zero is 1,000, thanks. So again, if we ask the total, once we've given you a derivative, you're going to do the integral. So you can get the cost is the integral of minus 0.04 x cubed plus 24 x squared plus 6 x minus 5,000 dx. And we know C at zero less it is 1,000. Is x in thousands? Yeah, x is the number of widgets in thousands. So x is the number of widgets in thousands means at the end, to find 10,000, you're going to plug in x equals 10, not x equals 10,000. Okay, so for those of you who plugged in 10,000 and got this ginormous number, do some business thinking. If you had to make 10 to the 20th widgets, if you could make them at the rate of one a second, It'll take a very, very, very long time. About a quadrillion years. Which is a long time. Right? There won't be there won't be a solar system at that point. There may not be a galaxy at that point. So that's not gonna happen. Right. And you say, well, we'll have to make them faster. I'm like, yes, you'll have to make them a lot faster. Alright. So um, let's integrate that. That's minus 0.04 x to the four over four. 
plus 24x over 3 over 3, plus 6x squared over 2, minus 5,000x plus c. So that's minus 0.01x to the fourth, plus 8x cubed, plus 3x squared, minus 5,000x, plus c. And we know that when x is 0, c is 1,000. equals 0 0.01 times 0 to the fourth plus h times 0 to the third plus 3 times 0 squared minus 5,000 times 0 plus c, so c is 1,000. Negative 0 0.01. Negative 0 0.01. Still comes out 0, but thank you. So the cost of producing x widgets is negative 0.01 x to the fourth plus uh, 8x cubed, plus 3x squared, minus 5,000x, plus 1,000. And now, find c of 10. So you plug in 10 and you get minus 0.01 times 10,000, plus 8,000, plus 300, minus, well this is unrealistic, 500,000, plus 1,000. Well, it's going to be pretty cheap to make 10,000 of them because of that 5,000x there. But that's okay. That's what happens when you copy it from the book because you get it a little wrong. So let's see. 9, 9,300. So that's uh, 490,700. Uh, negative $490,600. I think that's right. It doesn't really matter. You have calculators, so you can figure that last piece out. So it's a negative cost. Is that realistic? Of course not. Okay? So I probably should have written plus 5,000x, but that's the way it goes. The point is it's math. It doesn't have to be real world. How we feel about these integrals? Eh? It's not that exciting, right? You say, when am I going to use these? Jared, ask me, when am I going to use this? Never. Okay. It's not really true. You'll use them maybe once in a while. As I keep saying, you don't know what type of business you're going to go into. You know, I was in the bank this morning. All those people went to college. Some of them were business majors. You know, whenever I go into businesses, there's people there. They, they have business degrees. Not everybody is going to be trading bonds on the JP Morgan <coughs> bond desk which is a guy who traded in the Bankers Trust on desk that can, desk that can tell you it's overrated. You do get rewarded, but it's overrated. Okay? So some of you will definitely find yourselves in the number intensive parts of your jobs, and when that comes, you'll be good. It'll take you a little time, but you'll, get, you'll learn how to do these things. The key is to understand the numbers and know when you're getting nonsense. That's the, probably the most important thing that you're doing in the, what your boss will reward you for the most. Because if you can look and you can say, Something doesn't make sense, assuming you're right. Okay? So if you can catch something, don't be on the lookout for it. But if you're looking at something and you say, this doesn't make sense, we're doing something wrong here, and you're correct, you will be heavily rewarded. I know I was in that lucky position when I was about 25. No. Just, just sheer luck. I mean, so I, I wasn't very well rewarded, but I got more than a turkey for Thanksgiving. So there you go. Um, all right. So let's do a little bit more stuff today, because I know how excited you are to learn more. Eager young minds waiting to be filled with knowledge. Okay. I'm just going to do one sort of topic. Okay. So, business statistics. You're going to see average. 
So when we compute averages in general, we will be computing by adding a bunch of things and dividing by a number. But you can also find average for things that are continuous. In other words, have a smooth continuum of values, not merely you know, individual numbers. And when you want to average things, you'd say, well, how would I, how would I average them up? So let's take a small digression. I don't know if you guys are following the debate on the tax bill that's going through Congress right now. But they, when they want to be deceptive, they throw numbers around like average. Average doesn't always tell you a lot because, after all, if you take the average income between, oh, me, Chiefy, and Bill Gates, okay, you get a very large number. You say, look how much money we're making on average. You go, yeah, right? Or, um, you know, LeBron and I averaged 50 points the other day at the basketball game. You know, he contributed 49.99 of them, and you contributed the rest, right? So average is deceptive, but average is important, and it shows up in lots of business contexts, obviously. Average profit, average loss, average this, average that. So how do we find average? Well, suppose you have some curve, and you know you want to do the average thing. You could say, well, I need to find the area of the curve. And I know that if that's A and B, remember I said before, I know that the area is less than that rectangle. I mean bigger than that rectangle. Because I'm leaving out the part above the rectangle. And I know it's less than this rectangle. And the area of a rectangle, remember, is the base, B minus A times the height. So somewhere in the middle here, there's got to be some point where I can get exactly the area under the curve. Okay, somewhere between the area below and the area above. And that number, we call C star for some reason, that is called the average value. Okay, so let's make sure I'm describing this exactly correctly. So if you want to find the average value, that C star is what we call the average value. That's the number where if we took C and we multiplied it by a, B minus A, we would get the area. Right? B minus A is this, C is that. That would be the area of some rectangle, and that would be exactly the same as the area into the curve. So what we call the average value is then going to be um, 1 over B minus A, the area from A to B. Because, and that's going to be C star. Why is that true? Hang on, let's put that over there for a minute. Okay, I'll move it back in a second. So, this height times this will give me the area under the curve. So, if I divide by B minus A, I will get that average value. Okay, so if I do 1 over B minus A, times the integral from a to b of f of x dx, that will equal average value of f of x on the interval a to b. For example, of 
27 over 3 minus 1 over 3, which is 26 over 3 times a half, which is 13 over 3. I expect you to be able to handle that level of arithmetic. Not harder than that, but that level. You should. It's part of what's, what's necessary. So let's do an example. Here, we'll do the book's example. So we have some business in the marginal revenue per day. That's the amount that you make on the nth day, or the teeth day. The marginal revenue is 100 e to t, where uh, starting revenue is zero. And the cost per day Linear. This is not realistic, by the way, because at some point it's a very big margin. Okay, okay. Find the total profit for the first 10 days. some company, I'm going to tell you their revenue, I'm going to tell you their cost. But I didn't ask for revenue, I didn't ask for cost, I asked for profit. How are you supposed to find profit? I heard something in the or something in the breath. How would you find the profit? There you go. Revenue minus cost. Obviously, revenue is what you're bringing in, cost is what you spend. The profit will be P equals R minus C. So we're going to have to do the integral of 100 E to the T dt minus 100 minus 2T dt. Integral of 100 e to the t is 100 e to the t plus constant. And 100 minus 2t is 100t minus t squared plus a different constant. Point two. Point two. Oh, you're right, sorry. Uh, that would be point 0.1 t squared. So when r is 0 at 0, so we could say 0 is 100 e to the 0 plus a constant. e to the 0 is 1. So c is negative 100. So our revenue equation is 100 e to the t minus 100. Our cost equation is also c at 0 equals 0. So you've got 0 is 100 times 0 minus 0 0.1 times 0 squared plus c1. 
So C1 is 0. So our cost equation is 100 t minus 0.1 t squared plus 0. OK, now we have our profit equation. So profit is revenue minus cost. You plug in 100 here. I mean, 10 here, and you plug in 10 there, and you subtract. Okay, And you get, when you plug in 10, you get some crazy number. You get P at 10 equals R at 10 minus C at 10, um, which is 2, 2, oh, 1, 5, 5, 6, 5, 8. Dharmas. Okay. And then if we want the average, remember the only difference between the total and the average. So the average would be 1 over 10 minus 0 if you go from 0 to 10 of the profit. In other words, it would be take this number divided by 10. Which makes sense, right? Because Remember what average is. The average is the total divided by the number of things. So it would be the total divided by 10, day, 10 days, which would be 2201, 5566. Five, Rounding to the nearest penny. We all understand that? Of course, it can make easy average problems. We launched some music site. And we find that our revenue per month, or X is the number of months, research, one of the things you'll do is time series analysis, which is a very fancy sounding name. So imagine you are a uh, sales business, I don't know, you're selling appliances. And you look at how much you sell in January, how much you sell in February, how much you sell in March. Now you can make a guess for what you're going to sell in April. It could be average of the previous three months. That's called a moving average. And if every month you use the previous three months, so if in April you use January, February, March, and if in May you use February, March, April, in June you use March, April, May, that's called a moving average. You could just keep adding to the average. You could say this April should look like last April. You could do a bunch of different things. So that's the kind of stuff that you typically will do in the business world when you're projecting. So you'll do that in finance. You say, how much is the business going to make? Because we want to know how much we should pay to buy the business. You can look at what they made the last time. And then that's a good guess for the next time. You know, the past is an excellent predictor of the future, sort of. <clears throat> Not really, but sort of. Like the best guess for the weather on any day is that it'll be just like the previous day. 
and you'll be right about two thirds of the time, which is not bad, better than being on TV. Okay, and then you'll be wrong when the weather changes, but then you'll be right for a couple of days, and then you'll be wrong when the weather changes. So that's true with business. The, the business climate, the, the, the best guess for how many TVs we'll sell in June is you look at how many TVs we sold in May. You can look at how many sold the previous June, but things change a lot in a year. So anyway, average revenue, all this is, is going to be 1 over 4 minus 0. We can go from 0 to 4. x cubed minus 3x squared plus 100 dx. Okay, that's one fourth. Integral of x cubed is x to the fourth over four. You get three x squared becomes x cubed. One hundred x. Zero to four. That is one fourth of. You plug in four and you get sixty four minus sixty four plus four hundred. Minus, when you plug in zero, you get zero, zero, zero. So you get a hundred, hundred bucks. Or a hundred thousand bucks, or a hundred million bucks, I don't know what the units are. Just a hundred. How are we doing that one? Are we able to get a hundred? That makes me very happy. All right, I'm looking forward to seeing some of you on Monday. Have a nice weekend. And for those of you I don't see, have a nice Thanksgiving. <laughs>